okay, welcome to the stream. I'm a bit late. That's gonna work anyway. So I'm just updating the, the topic for the stream of today. I'm going to add some music. I'm going to close some applications to make the computer faster. If you can't hear me well, please let me know. Okay, everything seems to work. Music is here. All good. Okay. Almost there. Closing some tabs. So this is the seventh uh, session we have to develop the plugin. So let me add that to the screen. So what we want to do for today is, uh, last time we showed the top words of the nodes in a window, but that was really sketchy. Uh, what we want to do today is improving on that. So improving the user interface of the plugin. That's the topic for today. If I save, I, yeah, you should see it reflected now on Twitch. Uh, what else should I do? I should remind you of the link for the, yes, you see it in the chat, the link for the uh, resources that uh, relate to, to the, uh, to the stream. So the links to the GitHub accounts, to the GitHub repos, uh, and many other things. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, NetBeans is already open on my computer, but I have many, many projects that are not related to what we do today. So I'm going to close them quite a lot. So let's close them. Yeah. So 
So you should see my window now. Why don't we see? We see nothing in. So we see the projects and we see the. We see the editor. Why can't we see the editor? Okay, so not this one. I just want to show the editor so that we can work. It's as if it was opening elsewhere. Let's see what happens if we just we just open a file of the plugin. So I've opened the file. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, much better. So this is the plugin uh, as we were as we left it uh, last week. Uh, we have two files in the plugin at the moment, which is super uh, little. Uh, we have the top component, you know, L Explorer top component, and it's a, a kind of clumsy attempt at naming this file. It means Lexical Explorer top component in a kind of a abbreviated form. Um, and in this file, you see the, the code that, uh, you know, creates the panel, the window where the plugin is. Uh, so it's really about, you know, creating a window. And the second file is about, uh, you know, the logic of the plugin, which consists in, um, uh, uh, using the network which is currently opened in uh, Giphy and looping through the nodes of this uh, network. Uh, well, let, let me just go through, let me go through the plugin uh, in this file together. you see the file, top term extractor. So what does it do? It has one method there to import a file, to import a network. This method, we use it only to test the plugin. Um, we open a file and we, we work on it. So that's the method there, starting there and finishing there. Uh, but just to open a file and the method that does some work is this one, mine and sort textual attributes. So we can choose an attribute name, where the text will be extracted from, what is the language of the, of the, of the text from our nodes, and how many terms do we want to display in the plugin. Once we have that, the method initializes a project. Uh, by the way, uh, it does not initialize a project. It, yeah, it initializes a project by grasping, grasp, uh, grasping the one currently open. Then once you have you know, uh, you have the workspace that is currently open, you can take the graph model in it. And once you have the graph model, well, you can take the graph. So this graph represents the network currently open in Giphy. Once you have that, you can find the attribute that you want. So let me, uh, let me say it, uh, selecting the column corresponding to 
the attribute we want to analyze. We will iterate on the nodes of the graph, iterate or loop. That's more or less the same. Uh, what do we do when we iterate? We will store the description, the, not the descriptions actually. I should rename this variable. It's like the textual attribute in uh, for our texture texts from the attribute text from the attribute as simple as that we store the text of the attribute for each node in a list Okay, doing the iteration now. And once we have that, we have a multiset which will count how, how many, it will count unique words in these texts and how many times they occur. The multiset will store unique terms from the text we collected and count how many how many time times each term uh, appears find language specific lexicon I don't know what it means that's strange why do we have language specific lexicon what does it mean it seems to be empty right because when we tokenize we need such a we need such a set language specific lexicon what is that so it's not a topic for today but we should just understand what that is so let's go to the tokenizer so I've just opened the tokenizer to understand what this language specific lexicon is Okay, this is not super Okay, this is um, this is a low level thing we don't need. So we... Okay, that's not super interesting. So we can leave it like that. Then I've added some comments already and then Okay, and then what's missing is the last part where once we have all the terms and their counts, oh, you don't see it, in a multiset, we can we can sort the terms according from the, the term from the most frequent. From the most to the least frequent and select the top 10 the top n right it depends on the 
the parameter given to the method. Hey, Mathieu, glad to see you. I don't know if you're still there, but uh, happy to see you. Anyway, um, okay, so that's what we did last time, and we should jump to uh, the, the agenda for today, which is uh, looking at the uh, looking at the UI. So back to the window of the plugin. At the moment, it looks like that. The term will appear there. Um, and this is Oh, Mathieu, I, I had this setting, but it was definitely not on purpose. Uh, I, I thought it was something to, you know, prevent spams, a spam. But uh, if if it's too stringent, if it if it's actually not a good parameter, uh, you did well to to remove it. So this is uh, this thing right in the middle. It's uh, it's a label. And the issue we had last time was that when we showed the top ten, uh, uh, the top ten words in this label, uh, the line breaks were not taken into account. And I think the reason is that, uh, well, you don't have line breaks in uh, labels. But you know, I'm not exactly sure I remember correctly. So what we're going to do is very simply, uh, we're going to do a Google search on that. Uh, so G label line breaks. And as you see, oh, I actually don't see well. Exactly, you know, I'm not the first one to ask that, and that's a question on Stack Overflow from 2009. Okay, so you can use HTML tags in G labels. So that's what we're going to do. Back to NetBeans, back to top term extractor. If you remember what we did there, I would like, I think there is a setting to increase the size of the, there is one way to, in, no, not this one. I'd like to increase the size of the characters. I can't remember now which shortcut. There is a shortcut for that. I thought it was. Oh, that would have been convenient. So I'm currently just trying to increase the size of the of the text. I thought it was a very simple shortcut. I don't get it uh, now. Do I get it? No, 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 it doesn't uh, come back. Hmm. That would be super nice. Ah, got it. It's alt. OK, super. So you will see better. Ah, I'm so glad. Uh, so what we did is, uh, you know, this is this line that appends each top term to the line. So it, to make it a bit easier to read, let me do that. You know, it's so line by line, you see append the term, then open a parenthesis, then add the, the, the number of times 
the number of occurrences of this term, then close the parentheses, and then go to the next line. And this is the go to the next line that didn't work. So we should simply use an HTML tag to have the line break to work. So we have that should work. Uh, that should work. Now uh, we will not test it immediately. What we're going to do instead is continue improving. Uh, what I would like to do is having a drop-down menu that lists uh, so I'm really bad at UI so uh, forgive me there. We're going to have a list. Is it a list I need? Or a button group? No, a button group is a full. So let's do a list. Oh, that's going to be complicated, but... Um, so this list is to allow the, the user to select uh, the node, uh, not the node, the attribute they want to run the analysis on. So I suppose we could have the list like that. Yeah, something like that. Really awful. Uh, the list. So it's not should it shouldn't be item one, two, three. It should be what we should see here is the node attributes. So how do we do that? I can't remember. Um, but so let's first rename the list. We're going to call it. Oh, you don't see it. Sorry. We're here in the properties of the of the list. We're gonna, so it's going to be G list of node attributes. So that's the name. Then maybe in properties, properties, properties. Yes, the model. The model is a fancy way to say the data that the list is showing. So we're going to not have item one, two, three, four, five. We're going to have a dynamically constructed list of, uh, of uh, items. And I don't know how to do that. Uh, custom code. Yeah. Oh, th that's set model. That's very simple. G list of node set model. The the oh you don't see it. The the function that we're gonna use is this one. The set model uh, function. We don't have to set it here. We can do it in the code when the plugin gets initialized. So let's do that now. Uh, so at which time should the Okay, I think what we need is if we want to do things a bit more neatly, we're going to create a separate class for the uh, for the initialization of the graph, which is a very fancy term just to say that in the graph initially initialization which so this class you know this method kind of that's a class that's gonna have one method oh, come on. yeah this class is simply gonna contain the code to uh, to uh, basically uh, 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 use the currently open network as the one we're going to work on. So nothing to do uh, to invent. We're going to just copy what we were having there. Uh, what what did we have? That was there. 
you know, these lines, we're going to extract them and put them in a separate uh, file. That's the only thing we do. So uh, public, it's going to return a graph model, public graph model, uh, graph in it from currently opened uh, project. There is no parameter, and then and the body of the method is really the, the thing I just cut. Oh, I can zoom in now, now that I know how to do it. Okay, so and it's gonna return the graph model. That's that's it. I could make it a static class, a static method. Just for this, just for convenience. And so when we go back to our top term graph extractor, that's the class we're gonna, that's the method we're gonna uh, execute. And the graph is just. Oops, graph model, we had called it GM, not graph model. So the graph is just uh, gotten from the graph model. It's really, so why did I do that? I can't even remember now. I think the reason is that we want to choose the moment when this in a, is in a initialization takes place. And actually, the initialization might take place not at the moment when we mine and sort the textual attribute, but we might want to initialize the graph at the moment when the plugin is, is uh, you know, is uh, instantiated. So I'm going to cut this. And I'm gonna paste it there, you know, in the in the method in the constructor of the of the top component. So basically, the graph is 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 created when the plugin is. Uh, instantiated. I, I hope there is no issue with the order things, you know, in the, in the chronological order things should happen, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be okay. Uh, pop, 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 pop. So it returns a graph model, which is nice, but this graph model should be accessed by the rest of the app. So we're going to make it we're gonna make it a, a, a you know a top uh, like a general uh, field that can be accessed by the other methods. Private, yeah, yeah, that's better because now I can go to my where is my method the G list of nodes attributes. Yeah, so my uh, list, you know, the one from there, item one, two, three, this list will get its data, its list of item from the graph model. So at the moment we don't have it. So I suggest, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I suggest we're going to have a separate method for that. So I'm going to rename that. It's not graph in, in initialization. It's actually going to be a class that I often use, and I suppose it's a bad practice, but I call it graph ops operations, graph operations. So these are operations on the, on the graph. You know, this is where I basically uh, store my methods. 
so I refactor the name. Why does it complain? Yes, this thing doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, uh, so where were we? Uh, doc, 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 doc. Uh, yeah, so in the graph operations, we're going to create a method that uh, returns... Oh, by the way, what kind of argument do they expect there? Set model, what is, what is the argument? Set model. You know, what should be the f model? It's a list model. Okay, list model of strings. Okay, list model of strings. List models of strings. So, public. Oops, you don't say it. Do you see it here? Well, not too, not too clearly. Let me uh, make some. Sp Oops. Let me make some space there so that it's easier for you to follow. So I'm creating a method that will take the attributes of the node and will return their names of these attributes as a list that can be shown on the plugin. So it's going to return a list model of string because that's what is expected from the method of the of the of the list not not list string and return a node attributes as list of names that's not super great but uh, is going to take an, as an argument a graph model, and I suppose it's super straightforward. Ah, oh, you don't see it too well. I'm sorry for that. Let's let's improve a bit. Maybe if I do that, yeah, that's better. I think. So I was just, let's remove mine. Yeah, I was just browsing the methods that we have on graph model, and I hope there is a method to get the nodes, get node table, I suppose that's pretty good. Do we have, yeah, get node table, and then we have To list, yeah, we can have a list of node columns by doing that. So as you see, it returns a list of columns, which is a list of list of node attributes. So we should turn that into a list model. I don't know exactly how to do that. Let's try. Can I do that? I'm not exactly sure. Oh, I hate that. Am I allowed to do that? No, I'm not allowed to do that because I suppose it's an interface. Yeah, exactly. It's an. I suppose it's an interface or something like that. So I'm gonna switch to GitHub. Uh, not GitHub. Stack Overflow. Uh, Swing. Swing is the name of the framework for the UI we're using. Swing list model implementations. 
I'm just trying to find what's the name of the implementation. Come on, uh, that's not the, that's just a rubbish. Okay, how to use lists? I suppose we are in a better place. Default, of course, come on, Clemo. The name is default. Oh, I should have guessed it. New default list model. And that's it, we're gonna add. So we're gonna loop through the columns of the nodes. And for each of them, we're gonna just add their name to the list model. What? I can't add a string. What's the issue here? What? I must do something wrong, no? Where is the method that says I can add? Ah, get element at, but I don't want to get an element, I want to add one. Oh, fool. Come on. Okay, back to Stack Overflow. Oh, back to the Oracle tutorial. Add element. Yes, that's what I want. Where is the, where is the add element method? Did I miss it? Where is the list model? List model is do a new default list model and then add element. Why? Maybe there is there was an add element and I just missed it. Add element. I don't see it. What's the what's the hell? It's a Javax swing list model, right? I am not in the wrong. I'm gonna find it. It's just that I need to understand what's going on. Yeah, there is no add element. Oh, because it's an abstract class. But if I go to default list model, default list model. Oh, maybe I know. Yes, exactly, I know. Well, that's strange, but I understand. Basically, it's not a list model. I mean, I don't understand. I should. I was expecting by that by declaring my list model like that, it would work. But it, it seems that I, I should declare it as a default list model. The object, not just when it is instantiated. And then I should have the method I need, exactly add element. And the element is the name of the column, get. So I never knew the difference between ID and title, so. I'm gonna take ID because I'm, I'm not sure there is always a title. And once we have that, we can return. So basically, we 
we're going to return a default list model. And we're going to return list model, the list model object. So this method takes the name, the names of the nodes columns and it puts them in a list model can, that can then be displayed um, in Giphy. So let's go to where we were, which was our the code for our uh, the code for our panel or window. And what we do is execute, you know, when the panel is being instantiated, it should it should execute the function we have just defined to create a list model. And it should then display this. Okay, nice. And once we have that, we want the. So now, the when the user is going to open Giphy. Hmm. Uh, the issue is that if you open Giphy and there is no graph open, then I'm going to have some new exceptions there. So maybe I should make sure we don't have this issue. If the current pro if there is no current project, we should return null. We should return no graph. Exactly, that's better. Yeah, that's better. And. and back to our so basically the graph model here will be null if there was no network open in Giphy so if it is null oh, I hate this keyboard if the graph model is null because there is no graph open, then something should happen. If it is null, then this default list should be uh, empty, basically, like that. It's an empty list. Otherwise, otherwise, if there is a graph, then fetch the name of the attributes of the nodes and add them to the list. Then only you can show the list of attributes, list of node columns. Okay, so we have that. And then the user will select uh, so, but we just want the nodes that, we just want to have the columns that are textual, right? We don't care about integers and stuff. So maybe we should add this there. Return node attributes, no. Return textual node attributes. I'm super glad because I've never really, oops, okay, never mind. I don't care. Okay, the refactoring doesn't work in this case, so I'm just going to do it manually. Um, so, for so we are looping through the columns, and we're going to add only the column names that are of a textual um, type. So let's see how we can get the type of a column get uh, type class, I suppose. Yeah, sh I'm sure it's that. Uh, 
yeah, it has to be this one. So if the column class type equals, so I'm not exactly sure, but maybe string class. Honestly, I'm not sure there. Only then can you add the name of this attribute to the list. Nice. Uh, back to where we were. Where are we here? Oh yeah, so the... Okay, so now the user will pick an attribute in this list. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, I'm gonna go back to the... I'm gonna go back to the properties of the of the list. I'm sure we have plenty of information there. Yeah, exactly, I'm sure. Like, events, yeah, not good, events, events. Oh, but I don't care, I, I can go back to the tutorial I had found. So that's the tutorial we had. Sorry, it was there. Initializing a list, fine, we have done that. Adding items, done. Just want to. <clears throat> I just want to have a, a way to get which value has been selected by the user. Yeah, that must be. Okay, that's there. Action performed. No, no, no. List get selected index. It's really just that. Oh, and I suppose we can also. Say get list get selected index. Okay, super simple. Uh, we just want to make sure that only one item has been selected or several. Well, several. You could have several, right? You could analyze two. Well, let's just take one at the moment. Uh, but in principle, you could analyze the text on several columns. But we will do. So, how do you constrain? the user to just select one thing, it's there, single selection. Set selection mode, exactly, that's this one. Single selection. This one here, that's the one we need in our code. Source, back to the, you know, back to the So my question is, is this list instantiated when we initialize? Yes, yes, oops, sorry, you don't see much. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's better, I suppose, not exactly. So basically here, I can play with the list uh, because it has been instantiated there. So that's why I know it's not gonna be a null pointer exception. Uh, and so I know that this list, I want only one item to be selected on it. And the code, for that, I just copied it from the Oracle uh, uh, tutorial. Oh, come on. And we don't want single interval, we want single selection. Exactly, single selection. And, and then when the user will, where was it, run, yeah, this thing is when the, the student, when the user, is when the user clicks on the button for the plugin, 
uh, we want it to apply the the you know the texture extraction and counting not on the description column but on the column that has been selected so so let's do that um, so let's take the list the name of our list just there so first let's get the selected get oops get get selected value why not right so that should be the name of our column so selected column name if this thing is null or empty then return, no, do nothing. Uh, there should be a message there, but I'm a bit too lazy at the moment to, well, let's do a, a console print. Uh, no, no uh, column, no attribute selected, please choose one. But if the selected column name is not null, then use it. Oh, that's not a name, by the way, it's a column ID. Let's be precise because it could bite us later otherwise. If the column ID is not null, then the, it should be used to, uh, to do the text mining. Okay, do we want the 10 most frequent uh, terms? No, maybe we want the user to pick one. So by the way, we're gonna add a, a legend there to the list before all pick the column, pick the node attribute you would like to analyze. Uh, to analyze. Okay, that's where that's really awful, really ugly. Maybe you could put that in a frame or or uh, yeah, an internal frame. So that's what is called an internal. Oh, that's ugly. What is that? Oh, sorry, we should. So if you so this thing show, shows me the how would the you know how would the internal frame look like? But I want to go back to my full window. In order to do that, I go to window here and I select navigator. Uh, the navigator, yeah, is an extra panel there, but I'm gonna. Situate it there. The navigator, you can show it there, and you see that at the moment this is my internal frame which is selected, and I would like maybe to show everything there. Yeah, that's better. I'm not convinced that's what I need, so I'm gonna. Uh, well, maybe actually. So I'm gonna put that inside, then there. Maybe I can add a title. I think I can. Title, indeed. You see it there. So that's the title of my kind of container. Instead of using a separate uh, label, I'm going and just add the title there. This thing, this label, I can now remove. Okay. 
And there is a silly picture that I can remove, I suppose. Where is the... Oops. Attribute. Oh yeah, but that's not what I need because I, you know it's closable. This thing, look, and I this shouldn't be closable. So I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, maybe just a panel. Yeah, a generic lightweight panel. Let's try just a panel. If I do that, do I have a title? Can I put a title on it? No. So it's not right. I would like to have a name. Uh, maybe the one I currently have, but I would disable. Closable. No. And default close operation. None. Maybe. Yeah, do nothing. Okay, that's better. You can't make it an icon. I hope we're fine. Uh, okay, so that's that. This is where the labels will appear. The This is where the top words are gonna appear. And I just wanted to add a last Uh, last, uh, let's do a, a panel again. Uh, so I just want a single number. Text field, slider, spinner, spinner, I suppose. And the title is uh, how many top words to display. So from zero to whatever, uh, what's the So what are the properties there for this spinner? Next value is one. Is there a default value? Value, yeah, exactly, default value. No, there is no default value. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start by giving it a name. G spinner uh, number top terms. Okay, I copy that. I go back to the initialization. Initialization. Uh, method. So I sh suppose I should start putting some comments here. Uh, initially initializing the graph. Loading the names of nodes attributes.
And what I want to do now is I would like to set setting the default value of the top terms to display and it's a 10. And why do I do that? Well, because then we can retrieve this value here and use it when we run get value. Does it exist? So it's an object. But we should turn it into a number, I suppose. So into an integer even. I hope we can cast an object into an integer. Never know that. So number top terms to display. OK, it's almost four, so hopefully we can go and try all of that. There is just looking at my code, there is just one error here. Oh, yeah, because then it needs the graph. I need to pass the graph as an argument to my method. And then, uh, oh, not just the graph, but the graph model as well. Well, let's pass also the, well, let's pass the graph model entirely. Okay, okay, we have no issue here. We just need to, you know, we just need to pass. So do we have the graph model here? Yes, we have it. And we need to pass the graph model to the method and all should be fine. So, uh, okay, we are ready to go. I just need to remember how to compile a plugin. So I'm just going to look at what I have written in the past sessions. So how did we compile? Where is my Okay, so you do clean and build on the plugin itself. So let's do that. Right click on, like, on the name of the project, right click and clean and build. Then you pray that everything goes fine. Oh, the output is there. Okay, let me show you the output. Do you see the output? Not really. Do you see it better there? Yeah, just a bit. So praying that the compilation goes well because I uh, we are above. Uh, um, we we have spent an hour already. I don't want to. Okay, looks fine. Everything looks fine so far. Fantastic. So the build has. Is successful and if I look back at the instructions oops 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 why 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 all of that sorry for the then then I should do Maven package so let's do that oh by the way where is my where is my code I've changed I've changed the location Last time it's in the documents. Ooh, that's not in the good place, but okay, documents. Oops. 
so I'm just gonna go to the uh, okay so this is the this is the place where the files of the the files of the plugins are I open a console window so it's PowerShell for the for Windows on Mac that would be something else and I just do Maven package as instructed Compilation is okay right from the first try, which if you, the, if you followed the past episodes, you know how amazing that is. We've, we've, uh, we've been a long way. Okay, and then let me zoom in. Uh, well, you don't see super clearly, and uh, sorry for that. Uh, why? Oh yeah, I understand the issue. Uh, and then let's do this. Uh, Maven.org gave me Maven plugin run. So I just copied this instruction. I paste it here. And that should launch Giphy with our plugin inside. And the plugin should have everything we have coded today in it. So I see Giphy opening on my other screen. I'm gonna show it to you. That would be quite amazing if we have no null pointer exception right from the start. But we can dream, right? Well, it works from what I see. Uh, let me show you. So we have our plugin, it's really awful but uh, it's a bit better than last time. So we do have a 10 value, you know, for how many terms we want to display. Uh, we can switch that and it has nothing there. Oh yeah, I see the issue we will have. It has nothing there because we have no graph opened. We should have a button to refresh that because I'm gonna open uh, a graph, the New York Times graph provided by Flef. Great, but you see that it doesn't refresh here. So we should have a refresh button. Otherwise I'm gonna click on run and nothing will happen because we have no textual attribute. Okay, I would like to do that now because it's not that big. So I'm closing Giphy, I'm back in NetBeans. I'm showing the, you know, the design stuff. I'm just adding in this panel, I'm gonna add a refresh button there. Oops, 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 oops. No, I just want to go back in the design stuff. And then I'm gonna rename G button refresh attributes, node attributes. Fine, I'm gonna add an event. So, you know, what hap what happens when it is, well, it's already there, okay, fine. So we have the, you don't see it? Uh, yeah, you don't see it. Okay, so this is the method that's gonna be executed when our refresh button is gonna be hit. What we would like it to do is, uh, we want it to load the, oops, oops, oh, that's awful, we don't want to see that. 
we want that when we hit refresh, it's going to load the names of the nodes attributes. So we want basically to have that again. And all of that, basically. I hope it's going to refresh. Okay, so it doesn't get what this thing is. I understand that, so I'm gonna just copy it. That was the missing. Okay, all good. I would expect it to work. Let's try it again. So we're gonna compile the plugin. Now I remember, so clean and build. Okay, success, succeed, success. Uh, so back to our uh, console. And we, oops, that's big. Then we're gonna do just like we did, package. Okay, done and run. GIF is launching behind the scenes. I'm going to show it to you. Oh, as you see, I did not, I did not rename the button for refresh. But uh, uh, so, what happens if I click on refresh? I hope nothing bad. Yeah, it's normal because I don't have a graph open. So I'm gonna open a graph. You know the. So we need a graph with a textual attribute. Uh, so this one here. Yeah, the graph is finishing to open. Right, and now let's pray that when I click on refresh, we're gonna see the list. Oh, fuck, doesn't work. So the question is why? Oh, Mathieu, I don't know if you're there, but uh, there is somebody who is uh, spamming the chat. Well, nothing important, but... Uh, Okay, so what went wrong? What went wrong? I don't know. Maybe the code of my function is uh, bad. Well, I should really go. I'm supposed to bake a chocolate cake for my kid because he's celebrating his uh, birthday tomorrow in class. So I think it's a good reason, right, not to uh, not to spend another hour debugging. We're gonna just leave it for next week. Um, 
Okay, so progress, but not total satisfaction because, uh, yeah, because it doesn't work, you know, this list thing. Uh, but at least we have the um, the main elements in place for it to work for next week. Oops. So quick recap what we did today. Uh, we have just tried to um, add uh, 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 elements for user input in the plugin. So basically for the user to be able to select on which node uh, attribute the text analysis would be performed. We have not finished that. Uh, and uh, we have added another um, input field so that the user can select how many top words they would like to display in the, uh, in the window. Uh, we have not tested it, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be OK. And last, and we didn't test it as well, uh, but we have replaced uh, the line breaks between the top words that didn't work last week. We replaced them with another way to uh, execute a line break and hopefully it will work. But these three things, uh, list of attributes to pick from, uh, number of top words to display and proper line breaks, uh, we're going to have to test uh, them uh, next week. So see you next week. Bye-bye. And thank you, Mathieu, for being here. It makes a big difference, as always. Cheers.